in the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. We must never let the weight of this combination endanger our liberties or democratic processes. I am continuing and I am increasing the search for every possible path to peace. Maintain our strength in order to deter and defend against aggression, to preserve freedom and peace. No one, friend or foe, should doubt our desire for peace. The United States wants peace. We seek peace. We strive for peace. I pledged in my campaign for the presidency to end the war in a way that we could win the peace. I still think we ought to take the now. I respect your idealism. I share your concern for peace. I want peace as much as you do. We cannot wait for the final proof. The smoking gun. It could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. Hussein recently sought significant quantities of uranium from Africa. There is no doubt Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. Weapons of mass destruction. Botchman, VX, Sarin, nerve agent. Iraq and Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda. Iraq and Al-Qaeda. Terrorism. Cyber attacks. Nuclear program. Biological weapons. Cruise missiles. Ballistic missiles. Chemical and biological weapons. Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. President Bush has said Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Tony Blair has said Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Donald Rumsfeld has said Iraq has weapons of mass destruction. Richard Butler has said they do. The United Nations has said they do. The experts have said they do. Iraq says they don't. You can choose who you want to believe. You can choose who you want to believe. says it can prove that Saddam Hussein does have weapons of mass destruction, claiming it has solid evidence. The White House insisted again today it does have solid evidence that Saddam Hussein is hiding an arsenal of prohibited weapons. They might fight dirty using weapons of mass destruction, chemical, biological, or radioactive. There are ties between Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda. Anthrax, smallpox, dirty bomb, dirty bomb, Iraq-Al-Qaeda connection. Saddam Hussein and Al-Qaeda share the same goal. They want to see, both of, them, both of them want to see Americans dead. President essentially giving Saddam 48 hours to get out of Dodge. War now seems all but inevitable. Short of a bullet to the back of his head or he, he leaves the country, uh, war is inexorable. Well, I think that's exactly right. War is inevitable, and it is approaching inexorably. Is war with Iraq inevitable right now? I think it's 95% inevitable. You, at this point, right now, tonight, don't see any other option but war. To you, I'm asking you, Ambassador. <laughs> I, I agree. I don't think there's a viable option for the administration at this point. We're way too far out front in this. Send us over there, guys. Let's get on with it. Let's get it over with. Showdown Iraq. If America goes to war, turn to MSNBC and the experts. U.S. officials tell CNN. Bush officials says that. Analysts say. Pentagon officials tell us. According to U.S. intelligence. U.S. officials say. U.S. officials say that. U.S. officials here say. These officials here at the White House tell us. I just pull these two things out. I've laundered them so you can't really tell what I'm talking about because I don't want the Iraqis to know what I'm talking about. But trust me. Trust me. <laughs> We will, in fact, be greeted as liberators. The notion that it will take several hundred thousand U.S. troops to provide stability in post-Saddam Iraq are wildly off the mark. So the money's going to come from Iraqi oil revenue, as everyone has said. They think it's going to be something like $2 billion this year. They think it might be something like 15, 12 next year. The country 
that can really finance its own reconstruction and relatively soon. National Security Advisors Ken Edelman and Richard Pearl, early advocates of the war, said the war would be a cakewalk. There are reports that there is no evidence of a direct link between Baghdad and some of these terrorist organizations. There are known knowns. There are things we know we know. We also know there are known unknowns. That is to say, we know there are some things we do not know. But there are also unknown unknowns. The ones we don't know, we don't know. But, <laughs> excuse me, but is this an unknown unknown? Uh, I'm not several unknowns, and I'm, I'm just wondering I'm not if this going, is an unknown. I'm not going to say which it is. Mr. Secretary, you know, I'm right here. You I'm right something. here. About ten days after 9/11, I went through the Pentagon and I saw Secretary Rumsfeld and and Deputy Secretary Wolfowitz. I went downstairs just to say hello to some of the people on the Joint Staff who had used used to work for me. And one of the generals called me and he said, "Sir, you got to come in. You got to come in and talk to me a second. I said, "Well, you're too busy." He said, "No, no." He says. You, We've made the decision we're going to war with Iraq. This was on or about the 20th of September. I said, we're going to war with Iraq? Why? He said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, I guess they don't know what else to do. So uh, I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to Al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. So I came back to see him a few weeks later, and by that time we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. So go through the countries again? Well, starting with Iraq, then Syria and Lebanon, then Libya, then Somalia and Sudan, and then back to Iran. In the year 2000, in America, an organization set up in the 90s by the people who controlled and control the Bush administration this last eight years was set up. It was called the Project for the New American Century and it was created by people who have since become known as neocons or neoconservatives. September 2000 they published this and um, it was called Rebuilding America's Defenses, Strategies, Forces and Resources for a New Century. This is what it said. Uh, I'll come to that. These, these are three main people who were in the creation of the project for the new American century. Dick Cheney, Vice President, more power than the President. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld, Defense Secretary at the time of 9-11 and the invasion of Iraq. Paul Wolfowitz, Defense uh, uh, Deputy Secretary at the same time. These are some of the other neocons. Michael Ledeen connects into the fascist uh, network in Italy an associate of a guy called Licio Gelli who ran the P2 Freemasonry Lodge that was behind the uh, Vatican Bank scandal that led to a guy called Roberto Calvi being hung under a um, uh, uh, London, uh, London Bridge over the Thames. Richard Pearl, one of the major ar architects acknowledged in the mainstream media of the invasion of Iraq and the war on terror. John Bolton, ditto. Douglas Feith, ditto. Jeb Bush, brother of the President. William Crystal, um, editor of the Murdoch Weekly Standard, a neocon paper in Washington, and one of the major advocates in the media of the invasion of Iraq and the war on terror. This is what it said, that document, September 2000. It called for American armed forces, it called American armed forces the cavalry on the new American frontier. It said that key allies like the United Kingdom are the most effective and efficient means of exercising American global leadership. That's not happened, has it? The United States has for decades sought to play a more permanent role in Gulf regional security, brackets control. While the unresolved conflict with Iraq provides the immediate justification the need for a substantial American force presence in the Gulf transcends the issue of the regime of Saddam Hussein. It was an excuse to get in there. They ain't coming out. No intention, as I said from the start. 
He called for a blueprint for maintaining global US preeminence, in other words, the shadow network's preeminence through America, and shaping the international security order in line with America's principles and interests, see uh, before. This American grand strategy must be advanced as far into the future as possible, and the US must fight and decisively win multiple simultaneous major theater wars as a core mission. September 2000. Look what's happened since. It says that peacekeeping missions demand American political leadership rather than that of the United Nations. Happened. It highlights North Korea, Syria, Iran and Libya as dangerous regimes, target for takeover or control, and says their existence justifies the creation of a worldwide command and control system, World Ar uh, Army. This man, David Frum, who um, is a scholar of an organization called the American Enterprise Institute, which is a neocon operation that fits like that into the project for the new American century, was the man who wrote the famous um, State of the Union speech for Bush, um, I think it was in 2002, in which he said that there was an axis of evil that had to be targeted. What was that axis of evil? Iraq, Iran, North Korea, straight off the pages of the Project for the New American Century document. It spotlights China for regime change. This is where it's leading. They want a conflict with China for a massive global problem which will bring in the global solution, the world government and the world army, to stop it ever happening again, even though they created it in the first place. I've been talking about this now since the mid-1990s, the, the China thing, and in 2000 they come out and actually say it. It is time for a pres the presence of American forces in Southeast Asia, it says. This could lead to American and allied power providing the spur to the process of democratization in China. These people are crazy. And this is what it said in that document when it was saying that there was a problem with introducing this agenda because the people wouldn't have it. And this is what it said in terms of the time scale of this agenda. The process of transformation is likely to be a long one absent some catastrophic and catalyzing event like a new Pearl Harbor. This manufactured uh, story, uh, Abbottabad, allegedly the hiding place, the lair of, of bin Laden for the past uh, six years. It's totally fantastic, but the purpose is clear enough. They're targeting Pakistan for more attacks. The Chinese government has understood this immediately. We have a very strong statement from China this morning, basically saying to the U.S., if you mess with Islamabad, you will be messing with Beijing, and this will get into something much bigger than you thought.
Hi, this is Gerald Salenti, and here's today's Trends in the News. In my more than 30 years of trend forecasting, I've never been more overwhelmed nor concerned than I am today. The United States, France, and Libya, and, and uh, the UK have led the world into the first great war of the 21st century. It's unfolding before our eyes. And look at the people that are leading you and me. Cameron of the UK, Sarkozy of France, Obama of the United States. Not one of them has ever served a day in the military. And boy, do they talk tough. This is from the Wall Street Journal, the weekend edition. Battle stance gives lift to French UK leaders. Battle stance? The only stance that these little Eton Oxford boys have ever taken is to bend over in the shower. If they're so intent upon taking out Gaddafi, let them go and get him. And in the United States, read the New York Times, you know who the people that were behind it? Hillary Clinton, Samantha Powers, and Rice of the UN. Three women. So let's stop all that nonsense that if only the women were in charge, there'd be no wars. They were the prime provocateurs. Yeah, the three witches of Macbeth. The people better stand up and take action. Your lives are on the line and you have a bunch of losers out there that have w losing wars going on right now that are leading you into the big one. Does anybody think Gaddafi is just going to fold? So when they bomb London and France and they hit New York, let's not cry about, oh, they hate our freedom and liberty. Anything that happens to the United States, France, or the United Kingdom from invading a foreign country of their only interest. So let's stop all this baloney about, oh, it's a humanitarian mission. Yeah, like that humanitarian mission in the Sudan. Oh, that lovely one in the Ivory Coast. Or the slaughter in Yemen. It's not a humanitarian mission. It's about sweet crude oil, the most valuable on the planet. And they want it. Just like they're in Iraq. And you've heard me say it before, if broccoli was their major export, we wouldn't be there. They're leading us into the first great war of the 21st century. It's begun. People say to me, what should I do? What should you do? Grow up, you're adults. What do you think, there's a magic answer? You're gonna write your congressman, call your senator, grow up. Here's a solution. Let's stop paying taxes that are going to the military. Do something, use your brains, you're adults. Your lives are on the line, and so are your children's. So are your nations. You have losers. There's their bat zero on the battlefield that are gonna show you a winner this time. Guess what? If they bomb me, I bomb them back. And don't you think that that's not what the Libyans want to do? Stop the wars. We need peace. Our economies are sinking. And our empires are now in decline. This is Gerald Salenti, and that's today's Trends in the News.